Apply it on a set. Take one. So, who are you? I'm Harry Cook. And what do you do, Harry? Um, I do a lot of things. I'm a political consultant. I also am the founder of uh, PhillyOne.com, um, which is a currently a social networking site here in Philadelphia, but formerly the home of two community newspapers uh, serving the University City community and the Center City communities in Philadelphia. Yeah, great. Let's talk about PhillyOne.com. What exactly is PhillyOne.com? PhillyOne.com is uh, many things. Um, it started out in 1998 as a monthly uh, publication that focused on arts and culture features. Uh, basically the one thing you should do this month, Philly One, um, and kind of transformed over time uh, to really um, <clears throat> engage the community with uh, activism op opportunities, uh, gave many people uh, a voice in publication prior to the explosion of the blogosphere. And this not only uh, was an opportunity for individuals, but for community groups as well, um, to be able to get their message out about upcoming meetings, etc. cetera. Um, PhillyOne.com uh, partnered with the Weekly Press and University City Review in uh, 2002, and uh, we uh, served their content and they uh, promoted our video content um, for quite a few years. Uh, back in uh, 2000, we started doing weekly video interviews with individuals who were making a difference in the community, either in the arts and culture community, in the activist community, and uh, basically started streaming video uh, at a time when very few uh, mainstream sites were doing it. And um, I'd say that that kind of really differentiated PhillyOne.com from many other sites at the time. And um, we uh, we now um, have relaunched uh, last month as a social networking site that uh, enables people to use the tools uh, that you might find on YouTube, uh, host video, stream video, um, uh, also uh, engage in social networking like you might find on MySpace or Friendster or Facebook, um, make friends, uh, expand one's own network, uh, plan events, etc. We'll see how it goes. Uh, I have a strong belief in the social networking concept. Um, you know, Philly One compared to a MySpace is the difference between um, you know the phone book and a, a community group uh, newsletter uh, or or church directory. Might, uh, what what you might have uh, there. Um, people are members of multiple communities, just as you might be a member of you know, a, one community group and one professional group, you know, they don't have to be mutually exclusive and I think they all feed upon one another. And our focus really is localism, to be able to give the opportunity for artists and creators to come on and showcase their work, which was really the, um, the, the fundamental credo of Philly One in the, in the beginning. And now technology has really caught up to us and what we're doing. So that in a nutshell is Philly One. What inspired you to do Philly One? You said it's primarily um, for artists and creative people and things of that and nature. And activists. And, and yeah. activists. What inspired you to do that? Um, well, in college, um, I graduated from the George Washington, George Washington University with a bachelor's in political communication and uh, an undeclared minor in journalism. Had a ton of uh, journalism internships in uh, Virginia and elsewhere at the time. And upon graduation, I came back to Philadelphia and uh, did AmeriCorps with City Year of Greater Philadelphia. And my service year, my big project was a community newspaper written by uh, students from fifth grade through uh, the senior year in high school um, at the West Philadelphia YMCA. The program was called Village Voices. And uh, that experience was really life-changing. In, in many ways, not just the, um, the engagement in transformative service with a group of team members from a wide variety of backgrounds, but working with the children and seeing what the power of words could do, um, both in their education um, intellectually and also in their, um, their personal growth. And I wanted originally to make Philly One a home to uh, high school students to be able to 
um, have like a, a citywide newspaper. But I figured it would be a lot of work bureaucratically to get through the school district and at the time the takeover was taking place so I shelved that idea and said you know what I really believe in community, uh, community news um, localism and I want to take that that um, experience with City Year and kind of uh, merge it into my professional life and that's that's kind of like the the, the philosophical base that Philly1.com sprang from Okay. Now let's talk about um, public access here in Philadelphia. Mm -hmm. Now you know that public access television has been in the works for what, 20, 25, 25 years? years. Yeah. yeah. What are your thoughts and what are your feelings about that coming to Philadelphia? Well I think it's great. I think PCAC um, has done a great job uh, holding the fire to our elected yeah. officials and to Comcast to um, keep, uh, keep true to the agreement that they made back in the early 80s. Um, it's been far too long and last week um, was a real victory for the city and for PCAC and I know people like Daniel Redden have worked so hard to make that happen and um, the city, uh, you know, we're going to have finally a public access studio in Philadelphia uh, where people will be able to come, create, and um, disseminate uh, their, their own uh, productions. Um, you know, part of me is like a little mixed with it because you know, a portion of me feels that it's too much too late. Um, I mean, you've been doing this for a long time. I've been doing um, production for a long time on, a, on a, a small scale and using the internet as, as, as our, our, our vehicle. Um, and now with sites like YouTube and the sort of you know saturation that we now have and, and the footprint that they have, it's it's almost as if there there is a the line between television and internet is really being blurred. And in another three or four years, I think that line will be will not even be there at all. So, you know, to to go and create at the studio compared to going and creating in your apartment, on your Apple, on your Mac, um, you know, may not be such a such a, a benefit for someone like yourself who can afford to have the the DV camera and can afford to have the software applications to to do the production. But there are a lot of community groups and a lot of individuals that have great ideas and have issues that need to be heard and don't have access to the equipment to make that happen and may not have the technical savvy yet to get it on YouTube, but they will and they'll be able to get it on public access TV and on sites like YouTube and on sites like my, uh, like phillyone.com and be able to get that exposure for their issues and their, and their creativity. So I'm, I'm pleased, I just um, feel that, um, you know, uh, centralized uh, uh, studios may not be the best way to go I think the the city should have should have gone with multiple smaller facilities in in the neighborhoods um, but you know it's better than nothing and people will use it and it's a great thing how, how sp specifically do you think it'll benefit the city um, how will it benefit the city you know I don't know exactly how it will benefit the the city um, if you define the city as city government. But it will benefit the city um, in the same way that if you define the city as the people, um, it will benefit uh, us in a way that, you know, our collective voice and culture will be able to be seen um, and subsidized in a way that, you know, people elsewhere will be able, you know, if you're, if you're in Philadelphia, you can see it on, you know, the public access, but there will be a lot of great content that will be available on, again, sites like YouTube, and elsewhere on the internet that someone in Chicago or Los Angeles or New York or Miami or Paris or Moscow will be able to see and say, wow, the people in Philadelphia really have their stuff together. They're really creative, they're really smart. And you know what? I may not have thought about adding Philadelphia to my pantheon of great cities, but now I do. And I think that, that, has, that has some real potential with this. And Harry, what do you think of the city of Philadelphia? Oh, I love Philadelphia. I mean, I've been here um, a while now. I went to Akiba 
Hebrew Academy, which is a stone's throw outside the city. I grew up in Beverly, New Jersey, which is a stone's throw the other way in a small town uh, in Burlington County. Um, always felt my, you know, Metropole was Philadelphia, always rooted for the teams. My father is from uh, West Oak Lane, he's deceased now. And um, after college, I came back uh, to Philadelphia after some traveling and just started my life here. I have a, a wife and one year old baby. This Friday, he'll be one. And, um, you know, it's, it's, it's a very easy city to live in. It's, it's accessible, it's got great walking scale. Um, great amenities, great retail, great restaurants, um, great people. Uh, you know, I, I love to travel. Um, some of my other favorite cities are New York and LA, but I always love coming home. Um, and I hope that will remain uh, for years to come. So Harry, do you have any new projects that you're currently working on? Yes, I'm working on a very um, amazing Jewish communities resources website called doublechai.com. It's a social networking site for Jewish widows and widowers um, that uh, I started about a month and a half ago. Uh, we are growing uh, rapidly in terms of membership. And right now we're trying to form relationships with Jewish family service agencies and other community uh, service agencies in the, uh, serving um, that traditionally serve uh, widows and widowers in the Jewish community with bereavement groups and uh, advice on reintegration into the regular community and dating and things like that. Um, gotten a lot of positive feedback. Um, I started the site, uh, wanted to start it back in 2003, but at the time um, I was uh, very involved in the uh, My Vote One project. Uh, an election monitoring system and courting my then girlfriend, now wife, and uh, life kind of took over. We got pregnant, had a baby. Um, my father passed away in 2002, and I saw my mother uh, really uh, struggling socially uh, and emotionally uh, afterwards with. Uh, finding a safe place to grieve and grieve with another person. You know, it's, uh, there's only so much a, a spouse, a surviving spouse can expect from children who are also dealing with the loss. And it, a relationship that a child has with a parent has passed is much different than the relationship that a surviving spouse has had with a husband or a wife. And it's, it's something that only another individual who's been through that can really identify with and help um, another person heal and grow. And, and, and that really, that was really the, the inspiration for Double Phi. And uh, in, in, in action now, uh, I see that happening. I see members reaching out to each other and sharing. And, and some of the members on the site that have been widowed for five years or more reaching out to them, the newly widowed, and really showing them that there is, there is light when the dawn comes. And that, you know, the best way to honor the memory of of your deceased spouse is to live and enjoy life again. And um, double chai in Judaism, chai means life. Uh, double chai is really a celebration of life, both of the deceased and of the survivor. And um, you know, I expect a lot of great things from double chai. Um, might turn into a nonprofit, um, but as long as it really serves its, its mission, I'll be very happy. That's a wonderful thing that you're doing, Harry. Um, I also think other faith communities should do the same because, yeah, you know, death, while universal, is experienced uh, differently by the uh, by the, the person who's grieving um, in ways that are affected by their by their faith, and that's why I chose to make doublechai.com a Jewish widows and widowers um, community um, rather than just a general widows and widowers community. What type of uh, outside support have you been getting? Um, from other people? Well, um, so far a lot of interest. Um, Jewish Family Services of Southern New Jersey wants to partner with the site. They have a program called New Beginnings for uh, widows and widowers who are in the 40 to 50 age group and they want to kind of uh, get on double high in the same way that uh, a political candidate might be interested in joining MySpace 
or Facebook to get you know their message out because it really expands their service footprint to uh, a group of people that may or may not otherwise have had access to their services and ultimately as the community grows uh, you know these organizations can use Double High as a uh, development resource um, hopefully you know people who like the services that they provided will you know donate to the these federation organizations and um, you know we, we, we hope to be a nexus of services by third parties but we also have our own services that that we provide um, with bereavement chats we have mental health experts and we have um, uh, faith um, uh, uh, members of the faith community rabbis clergy um, who come and um, uh, engage members on a regular basis as needed and we're always looking to uh, to uh, to bring more services to the site you know it's only been up a month and we do have some growing pains you know with technology and things like that but um, it's been very positive and everyone I talk to wants to be involved with it more so than people had ever wanted to be involved with really one so uh, it's kind of interesting to see and how can uh, one get in touch with you in reference to that oh um, if people want to get involved with Double Chi, um, you know, we're open to partnerships, we're open to sponsorship. Um, you know, just uh, go to doublechai.com, um, send me a message, harry at doublechai.com, um, and we'll work something out uh, because it's a wonderful resource for the community. And if you care about widows and widowers, um, you need to be part of doublechai.com. And if you are a widow or a widower, you need to be part of doublehigh.com because there is strength and power in community and in organizing. So I highly recommend it. Tell us once again uh, what phillyone.com is and how can we access it? Oh, well, phillyone.com is again a social networking site. Uh, it's available at www.phillyone, P H I L L Y, one the number, dot com. And, um, you know, check it out. Uh, join, create, share. All that. Any advice for any up-and-coming people who want to be on the internet or um, upload videos for the internet or just become a part of the, the whole internet scene? I think you just have to do it. You know, don't just think or sit or wonder how am I going to do it. There's plenty of opportunities now. It's you know, it's it's not 1997. It's not 2001. Uh, you can just do, uh, just create, um, just engage other people um, don't expect financial reward immediately or ever um, but do it because it's what you want to do um, and I think that's the best advice I could ever uh, could ever give uh, someone that's aspiring to you know make their mark in some small or a large way we've been talking with Harry Cook Harry, it's been a pleasure speaking to you again as always. Thank you, Tony. And uh, we'll be meeting here again at Rittenhouse Square Park in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. I see you all the time. So <laughs> we'll I'll bring my baby next time. Yeah, bring the baby next time. So okay. thank you very I much. I appreciate Harry. it. Thank you. You're thank welcome. You, Tony. You're welcome.